I'd like to welcome you to Doctor in the Making, where we will be discussing all topics related to medicine with the top influencers and doctors in the state of Florida. Hi, I'm Dr. Randall Silviger, Assistant Professor of Family Medicine in the Department of Humanities, Health and Society of the Herbert Wertheim College of Medicine. Today I'd like to talk to you about some of the skills that you would learn if you come to medical school at FIU. The first is what we call patient-centered interviewing. We like the patient to feel like the center of the visit, the purpose that we are there, the most important reason. So what are some of the ways that we can make someone feel comfortable? First is professionalism. When you look at your physician, think back to an encounter that you had at a doctor's office. What did you like about the way you were treated? Is there anything that you would have wanted your physician to do a little differently so that you felt more comfortable and able to talk more freely? First of all, you may want the physician to look like a doctor. Now for many of us, that means wearing a white coat. So when you see your doctor wearing the white coat, it gives you an idea that this is somebody who is more professional and you may feel a little more respect. Maybe as you get to know the doctor, the, what the doctor's wearing isn't as important. So after the doctor enters the room, the first thing that we do to generate confidence in our patient is we wash our hands. It's very important that we don't spread disease while we're trying to take care of a patient. So washing our hands is the first thing that we do because it's important and the patients are looking for that. So we certainly want to do it in front of the patient. Some things to think about when we're talking about infection and spreading infection. You may not realize it, but your clothes can actually transmit infection. Some of our instruments, we have to make sure we clean in between visits with a, the patient. My stethoscope, if I touch a patient's chest with it and don't wash it, I could transmit germs to the next patient. So there are some basic principles of hygiene and of being aseptic that we use. Then we go layers deeper if there's a pandemic and we want to protect ourselves more. We have N95 masks, which are designed in a way that through electrostatic charges as well as the filtering, it keeps very, very small particles away from your face. Then if you want additional protection, we can use a face shield. And this is what I would wear if I'm gonna be face to face with the patient, examining the eyes with an ophthalmoscope, looking in the mouth, and anything where that might cause the patient to cough or breathe on me that might contain virus particles. So the first part of connecting with your patient is having the proper dress the proper dress by appearance, and the proper dress for protecting you, the, the doctor, from germs from the patient and protecting the patient from germs that the doctor transmits. An interesting fact is that it's only relatively recent in medical history that we knew germs could be transmitted from one person to another. And it was found that the surgeons who had the most experience, the, the best skills, also had the highest rates of infections after their operations. That was because they were practicing on cadavers and then went right into the operating room and transmitted the germs there. To us, it seems like second nature. We know we wouldn't do something like that. But there was a time when they didn't know that. So we're learning all the time as physicians, as a profession, we are always learning what we can do better. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and you want to see more, click the like button below and follow me on Instagram at doctorinthemaking underscore. Also, if there's a topic you'd like to see us talk about, make sure you let me know in the comment section below. And always remember, be grateful.